Now let's take a look at parallel networks, parallel resistor networks. So let's say we have our battery again, plus, minus, and we're gonna wire it up this time to not just, not just one resistor and definitely not in series. Let's try that again. We've got this line, but we're also going to put another resistor here in parallel. We're going to call this one R1. We're going to call this one R2. And we're going to call this V. And now the question is, how does this behave? And what is the total resistance that the battery is seeing? So again, we've got a node here, a virtual node here. I'll put that actually where at the spot it is. This node here and this node here. What is RT? That's what we're trying to figure out. What is the total resistance of these of this circuit now that we have these two resistors in parallel? Well, the way to understand this is to look again at current and understand and now apply, we're going to apply Kirchhoff's first law, current law here, and say that there's one current flowing into the node. We're going to call it I, and it branches off into a current here and a current here. And therefore, this current that flows this way, we'll call it I1 for resistor 1. It, and this, res this current here, we'll call it I2 that flows through R2. The sum of all of these must be zero, right? So it means I must equal, oh, sorry, not, let's, let's, call, let's call it equal I plus I1 plus I2 must equal zero. And just because we want to keep all the signs the same, let's do a little bit of renaming. And instead, we'll say, so just so that we can have all the currents be positive, because it just makes our lives easier, we'll say that I minus I1 minus I2 is equal to zero. And so we can rewrite this as I is equal to I1 plus I2. Right? These are, this is breaking up, and the net current at this node must be zero. So if this is true, then we can start to think about what this net relationship must look like. So at the end of the day, the total resistance must hold true to this relationship. We still know that V is equal to I times RT. That's still true because guess what? This entire thing looks like one resistor at the end of the day, if we were to think about it and make sense of it. And so the key then is to figure out how we can rewrite this in terms of R1 and R2. Well, we know this relationship that I equals I1 plus I2. So why don't we see if we can rewrite this in terms of the parameters that we know. We know that I, this I, big I, total I, is equal to V, is related to V and RT. So let's rewrite this I as V over RT. And let's set it equal to I1 plus I2. And all I did here is just take this guy on the other side and use that and plug it into this equation. But then we can further rewrite I1 and I2 because we know the resistance of each of these. And so that means that I1 is just whatever voltage is being dropped over R1. And we'll just call that V1 for now over R1. That's just this local voltage drop plus V2 over R2 because that's just I2. But it gets even better. Because of Kirchhoff's voltage law, the voltage drop between here and here, right, the V passing through R1, forms a perfect loop, right? a single loop between the battery and this resistor. That means if this is V, 
positive V being pushed up here, then the voltage drop across this resistor must also be V. Similarly, the same logic applies here for R2. If this is a loop that we can draw, then Kirchhoff's law here will tell us that if this is V being pushed through the battery, then V voltage must be dropped across R2 as well because it's the same node and we can draw a loop. And you have to have zero volts over any loop that you draw in a circuit. What this is telling us practically is that V1, V2, and V3, I'm sorry, V is equal to V1, which is equal to V2. They're all the same because the voltage drop here and the voltage drop here is the same as the voltage that the battery is pushing up. And so we can then rewrite this one more time and say that V over RT is equal to V, V, not V, not V1, just V over R1 plus V over R2. And that makes our life quite good because we can then just factor out the Vs and solve for RT. And so we can pull out V and just cancel off all the Vs and say that one over RT is equal to one over R1 plus one over R2.